Sometimes you buy kit and you truly regret purchasing it. Well, that's not the case with these items that I bought in 2023. So what's the first bit of kit that I'm really excited to share with you? Well, it is the Amaran Spotlight SE. This was a bit of a risky purchase, I felt, for me. I didn't want to spend a fortune on a more expensive Aperture Spotlight system, so I thought I'll just go for the Amaran, I'll see what it's like. It's around £350. It's one of those kind of purchases that you think, will I actually use it, or is it just a case of you use it once, you realise it doesn't really give you the results that you want. Um, but that's not been the case with this at all. In fact, I think it's become mine and the photographer I work with our favourite bit of kit that we've been using pretty much on every shot on these resorts. It's a nice way of adding some subtle interest to a shot. Whether it's adding a fake sun to a room, or you're doing a detail shot that could just do with that little bit of realism added into it. Well, you grab the spotlight and suddenly you've got this really nice shaft of light, or you can use one of the gobos and have different things and different patterns going on, whether it's uh, trees or uh, window frames, whatever it may be. It just adds some really nice realism to the lighting of your shots and has really, I think, improved the production value of what I am producing. Other than the price, the other reason I went for the Amaran over an Aperture Choice was really down to the size. Now, it's not perfect. I will be doing a full review of this Spotlight, but the size and the weight is really handy when you're traveling. I would recommend though going for the 36 degree angle lens rather than the 19 degree, which I've got here, because this can be a bit tight, especially in smaller spaces. If you're doing a lot of real estate uh, interiors, for example, you'd wanna go for that wider one because probably the rooms aren't going to be uh, big enough for you to get the light further enough back to give you the kind of look that you're going for. The second thing that I'm really excited to purchase this year is a cine lens, and specifically the DZO 35mm Vespid Prime. Now there are many options out there, and in the end I decided to go with the DZO. I've got a whole video about why you should use cine uh, lenses with your Sony FX3, so make sure you check that out. But in particular, out of all the lenses, the 35 is just something really quite special. The 90 is also very cool, the macro is very nice, but I find that I'm just using this 35 a lot, especially with lifestyle. It's got some really close focusing, which is nice. It's super smooth and just really enjoyable to use. That weight, that feel, it just makes you want to go out and shoot. Third up is actually something that I am reviewing right now. This is the Freewell Eiger matte box, along with their sort of filter tray system that they've got going on in here. And it's just a really nice thing to use. I probably wouldn't have just gone out and bought it myself, if I'm honest. But now I've got it, I totally would recommend someone picking one up. It's very nice to use, it's very easy to, to attach to the front of your camera, it doesn't take up too much space. Um, and I just love how the filter system works and how it's got a little dial on the side so you can adjust your variable ND. It's just really nice, it's well made enough, um, it's portable, it's small, and it comes with a great set of filters that I've been using a lot, especially with lifestyle. This small rig tripod head has been so useful this year, despite being so affordable. I really was struggling to find a small tripod head that could be really portable, easy to travel with, but still good enough uh, for the quality of the moves that I want to be able to achieve with it. With the small rig, it has ticked all those boxes. It does everything that I want from it, especially when just using a mirrorless camera, something like the Sony FX3. Now, of course, it's not a perfect tripod head, and why would it be at the price that they're selling it for? But I have to say, unless you spend a lot more money, I don't think you're gonna get a tripod head that's much better than this. I think if you're looking for a really portable tripod head, then definitely this is the one to go for. I do think their legs are quite large and don't really pack down that small, so I would look at other options there. I've gone with the iFootage Gazelle, they're awesome too. But certainly, I think as a tripod head, it's hard to miss up on, especially if you're doing a lot of travel work. Now, I was a bit late to the game for getting an M1 MacBook Pro, and actually early this year, I picked up one, and I have talked about it on this channel earlier in the year, whether you should have gone for the M1 or the M2. I think if I was right now going for it, I would probably go for the M3 instead. But my one recommendation, if you haven't switched to the M chips, is just switch across now. It's such a huge improvement. The battery life alone, I think, is the real game changer for me. It completely changes the way I can use the laptop, particularly on set. 
So when we're doing these shoots of resorts and hotels and we're going around shooting all the rooms and the spaces, what we do now is we actually just keep copying throughout the day. We just keep adding to the bins and folders into DaVinci Resolve. So we're constantly adding to a timeline of B-roll that we're building as we shoot. It's great because it means we can start color grading as we're there. And because the battery life is so good, I literally leave it on all day. It's just in the corner of the room. We plug in an SD card and the SSD, we transfer, we do a bit of color grading, we add the footage, we trim it all up, and we just keep building that throughout the day. And I get to the end of the day and I've still got 30 or 40% battery life left. The M chip Max are such a huge game changer. And if you haven't already got one, just go ahead and pick one up. Even if it's just a base model, it's going to completely change the way you shoot and edit. Finally, it's the Tamron 35 to 150, which is actually the lens I'm using right now to shoot this on. This is an awesome lens. I've actually picked up the Samyang as well because it was a great deal during Black Friday, which is a very similar lens. But just talking about the Tamron briefly, and I will be doing a full review of this in the future as well. The 35 to 150 is such a useful range for so many shoots, especially if you're doing a lot of B-roll of people. Now, of course, it's not that wide. 35 isn't wide enough for everyday use. However, when you're doing B-roll, especially for corporate work, I think this might be the perfect lens. So there you go, that is the best kit that I've purchased in 2023. Is there anything you've got this year that's got you really excited to go out and shoot? For me, all this kit has easily paid for itself already and I would happily purchase it all again if I really needed to. I think it's become an essential part of my base kit that I'm going to use from now on.